together four complete strangers. Welcome. <laughs> Ask each to host their perfect dinner party. It's a dream to wake up to this every morning. Oh, my <laughs> gosh! He's got a mermaid! Those... Oh, hairy balls. I can't bear the thought. The oh. cockroach. Holy oh, my shit. gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Make them score each other in secret and watch things get hairy. I don't think anybody who's anybody would actually wear real fur. Till one winner walks away with a 10,000 Rand prize. We're in Cape Town City Bowl, a natural amphitheatre where Atlantic chic meets urban trendy. And they've got a wheel! Tonight's first show-off is TV commercials producer Dale Kushner. Come on, Dale, smash it! A lot of people have a nickname for me called King Kushner. Not Dr. Evil. Well, I love traveling and I live in Los Angeles and Cape Town, so I have the best of two worlds, basically. I say I'm intercontinental. Get you! Contestant number two is clearly into exercise. Performance artist and actor, come on down, Jodie Lee Dealing. I'm a part of a show. I'm a part of a show, Jodie. It's like... That's right, fella. You're part of this show. Tell us about yourself. Ambitious, hardworking, totally possessed, lots of personality and a bit anal. <laughs> yeah, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> right, a fussy show-off, then. The third contestant is more prim than pizzazz. Tracy Stewart is a litigation lawyer who hates people getting too close. There's nothing worse than body odour, but also it's, it's really a hygiene thing and, and, and that I have my personal space and I don't want hugging. Hugging is for when you haven't seen somebody in, like, four months or a year. She sounds like a fun night out. Air kiss, air kiss. We can do an air kiss. That's fine, you know, greet them that way. And handshakes, also good. I'm fine with handshakes. Well, these hands look suitably sterile. It's final contestant Sandra Bryant, theatre nurse and hippie. I nurture 24 hours a day, and where it's needed, I'm there to nurture. I'm a very happy person. My skin fits me very well. I generally get told that I look very cold and distant. I'd like to believe <laughs> that people warm up to me instantly. I think I have to be nice to everyone in the beginning since I'm the last person to go. My game plan now is just to be cute and fun and friendly and make everybody like me. Oh, you may want to reconsider that hugging ban then. First to host is Sandra, tucked away in her house, festooned with trinkets and some of her own artwork. Sandra begins the day by prepping dessert. Madame Susara's delicate deliciousness, dusted with fairy dust and real gold. Opulent. Go okay, out well, to the real gold. You got me there, madame. <laughs> they will probably say, oh, old hat, I've heard this before. Or they will go, you can eat gold. The real gold thing is, you know, it's been done before, I think, so... Oh, dear. Let's hope the fairy dust magically throws some enthusiasm into proceedings. Next up is the main spur-winged goose on baked quince served with potatoes in goose fat. This is a menu or a novel? <laughs> oh, this is busy. Hey, there's, there's so much happening here. I can't say it. I'm hoping I can eat it all. So at my garage, I hang the goose by its neck uh, in a rope. I then take a pair of a, a scalpel and I cut it straight through to its bottom. After taking a, um, a pair of tree clippers to cut the, the arms off and to cut the legs off. Well, it's going to be the goose or the gander on this one. <laughs> I would like to show the guests tonight, the, tonight what I've done regarding the bird, but I'm scared that some of them might be queasy or... Um, yes. Um, ..sensitive uh, more than anything, and I don't want to put them off their food. So I am going to have a picture available, and those who feel up to it can have a look. Oh, I really don't think that's a good idea. With the bird basted, the final dish to manhandle is the starter. Smoked salmon mini quiches on wild rocket and baby spinach, dressed with caper cream sauce and caviar. I hope that the smoked salmon is actually real salmon um, and not uh, salmon trout. The salmon that I'm using tonight is smoked Norwegian salmon. I find the salmon trout is not as strong a flavour as the, the Norwegian salmon. And as I'm doing quiches, I want the flavour to come through. Many quiches, that probably a bit difficult to put it in the little tart thing. I love rocket, especially wild rocket. They are totally, totally pizzazz. Rocket is the one herb that I, I find quite bitter. Delicious. Whoa! 
Where are we now? Welcome to Madame Suzara's tent. This is a dining room that I created for my friends to walk through the door and come into a little bit of a fantasy world. It's not like any fantasy I've ever had. Hey-ho! Formal handshakes at the ready, please. Your first guest is here. It's touchy-feely Tracy, not... Hello. Hello. Hi, Welcome. I'm Tracy. I'm Pleased Sandra. To meet you. Sandra, very Come pleased inside. to meet you, Sandra. Just Careful, Sandra, not too close. Don't get us a drink. Thank you. I've just bought you something small. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. It's Thank you pleasure. very much. You can be entertained here for hours. Boobs. <laughs> Thanks for pointing them out. I think it's very interesting that she painted that because, um, I don't know, it's just maybe inappropriate. She's like a, a little old lady and she's painting boobies. <laughs> it's weird. They're just boobies. We've all got them, sadly. Next in, King Kushner. Hi. <laughs> a punctual man. <laughs> Hi, Dale. Nice Hello, to meet Dale. you. I'm Sandra. Nice Welcome. Nice to meet you. I brought you some wine. That's oh, my own okay. wine. Hi there. Hi, Tracy. Dale. Nice to meet you, Dale. Nice to meet you. Rounds down. Attention. I see you've got some, some glitter in your ear. ear. <laughs> oh, that's just taking the sparkle out of his okay. ten-carat diamond stud. Is there a story behind that? Nah. No. Just for fun. Just for fun. Yeah. OK. That's killed that conversation. Maybe performance artist Jody can add a little pizzazz to the party. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. I'm Jody. Hello, Jody. I'm nice Sandra. To meet you. Oh, nice Come to meet you, Sandra. Thank you are. That's oh, for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come inside. I'm just going thank to you. close the door. Thanks. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> I hope you all have a lovely, lovely evening. I did walk in and immediately my eyes went to the kitchen and I was just checking that everything looked clean. I'm a Miss Prissy and oh, I'm very pedantic about this and about that and I'm just a lawyer and I'm aware, like, oh, I, that's like the impression that I get of, um, of Tracy. That is uncanny. Um, I'm assuming Sam is around 60, 65, maybe. Um, but with a little bit of a hippie energy, you know, that whole little, oh, free with the world. This is what tonight is going to be all about for you. We're going to go into a little bit of a fantasy world that I've created for you tonight, because we don't have a lot of time for fantasy. So it's here tonight at Madame Suzara's. I don't think they're prepared for this fantasy. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Looks like Madame Susara's tent's fallen flat. How magical. I really thought we'd be going into this beautiful garden. I imagine the garden. Mm. A patio with a beautiful table set out with wine and a view and waterfalls and trinkets. That, that's what I would have thought. I didn't think it would be as dramatic as it was. <laughs> the little angels, my friend Lisa, made for all of you for tonight. Oh, wow. To be amazing. part of your you. angelic experience. I think she's holding on to a time or to a place or a phase in her life that was amazing. Hey, it could be the 60s. <laughs> Girl, you gotta let go. I'm excited. I think my guests that came tonight look like fun, they look enjoyable, they're nicely dressed. I think it's going to be a great evening. So great, there's a gate crasher. Oh, my word, there's a cockroach. Holy shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. What? That is disgusting. <laughs> okay, well, why is it coming for you? It's coming for you. <laughs> Dale, would you yeah. mind? <laughs> what? Must I kill it? Yes. I can't kill it. Why I'll not? catch it's it and I'll throw it out. It. <laughs> I'll throw it out, but I won't kill it. Well, if that's oh, the case, shame. then that's fair sweet. enough. If you can catch it, because those things can... fly. <laughs> oh, I hate a cockroach. <laughs> Got it. Oh. Whoa! I almost oh, fell through the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dale Strong, a low producer guy. My diamond earring. I catch a cockroach. <laughs> Don't you worry, Tracy. I've got this. Ha, 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 ha.
I'm gonna go uh, flush it down the toilet. No, shame. I'm gonna know. throw it outside. Well, you've already crushed I'll it. I'll throw it outside. No, it's, I've got it here. It's the first cockroach I've seen in two years. I don't know what to say. There's nothing I can say. The things fly. They fly everywhere in Cape Town. I can't stop them. Do you wash your hands? Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? You want to smell there? No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I think that Tracy uh, gets freaked out by a lot of little things. <laughs> so I kind of enjoy that. Hello? Do you like Park Town prawns? No, of course not. <laughs> In China, they eat them. It's definitely, um, I, they got that glary look. I can feel them looking at me a lot, inappropriately. So I don't know. I'm not comfortable with that. Yes, eyes down, because it's time to concentrate on the food. Smoked salmon mini quiches on wild rocket and baby spinach, dressed with caper cream sauce and a whopping blob of caviar. <laughs> Tracy, for you. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> Thank you very much. Isn't it usually red? No, the real caviar is black. There's a lot of it. <laughs> Is real smoked salmon. Mm. Pardon me, it's Norwegian smoked salmon. Oh, cool. I, I expected smoked salmon not cooked because I, I hate cooked salmon and smoked salmon is even worse when you cook it. Thanks, Mr. Intercontinental. Nothing was coming together. Things were mushy. It was really like a little... I couldn't finish it. I was being polite and I had half. Oh, the caviar, that was right on top. Well, I just moved that around because, I don't know, I, that just, that was way too much. I know that I don't eat caviar, and I know I, it's usually on sushi and I can have it in small doses. I think this is Tracy's plate that I'm holding. And um, Tracy is a tall, slim, model-like creature. And I think she had enough. No, it was because she didn't like it. And I'm suspecting there's not a lot she does like. What do you guys think about the main? Well, I first didn't know what a spur wing was. Well, okay, thank goodness was. I wasn't the only one. I did some one. research, actually. Okay. Yeah. So, that's me too. Yeah. As you type into the internet search bar, then it often predicts what you're going to say. And I type spur winged goo, and I got goose and poison was the next one. There's a certain kind of beetle that this specific goose eats. Eat, yes. And it can make it poisonous and deadly to eat. Nothing like a healthy portion of paranoia. Apparently they eat a certain type of berry which then goes into their skin and it can be fatal, fatal to eat them. Not just bad for you, fatal. And the possibility of dying here in this little thing. <laughs> it's not the way I want to go. I've big dreams my life. <laughs> yeah, well, Sandra's got big dreams too. Dreams of winning this competition. Make way for the melodramatic main. Spur-winged goose on baked quince, served with potatoes in goose fat, broccoli and corn mousse, asparagus bundle with hollandaise sauce and baby carrots. Let's hope it's not fatal. Can you tell us about the spur-winged goose? Yes. Where did that come from? And have you researched it? Yeah. Have you researched yes. it? Yes. Oh, now Tracy has something very interesting as well there. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's called something, something, something gabensis. A large four to seven kilogram flying goose yeah. that eats mostly wheat. And a certain type of beetle. And a certain that is type potentially of potentially poisonous. Which they don't eat in this country. Oh. Hooray! Because um, and that's why they get cold, and I've I've read all about it because I knew because it's an unusual dish that you were going to question me. They don't here because they have enough canola, which they eat when the wheat is not ripe. So drama averted, but has Sandra cooked her goose correctly, or is her goose cooked? My first time having goose, and then it's, it has a very much of a bolt-on taste. Is that? Mm, it's a gamey taste. The goose tastes like bolt-on. Come on. I can't remain. Bolt-on. Oh, I'm not sure about these photos, Sandra, but I'd definitely bring the bottle. You really are not obliged to, obliged to look at the pictures. No, I'll have a look. I'm open-minded. There's my brother. Okay. With the goose. Are you showing us photos of this goose or another goose? And she said, no, 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 another goose. <laughs> and I just wanted to show you um, <laughs> how I went about 
Oh, no, I don't no. want to see those ones. <laughs> so that was this goose, right? <laughs> that was this goose, but that's in the freezer, which I can go and fetch for you oh, if you want go. to see it. It's not what we're eating tonight. And then she shows me pictures of it hanging on its neck, <laughs> where she says, this is how I skin it. So Something that's just... Hang on. Tracy, I don't want to do yeah. this anymore, so I'm stopping right here. Yes, right here is probably just a bit too late. Last dish to dazzle the guests with is Madame Susara's delicate deliciousness with real gold. It was a bit of a confusing dessert for me. Um, it sounded, you know, when I read it, it said delicious delightfulness, but I'm not quite sure I got that from it. it, it to me, it was just like a trifle. Oh, I was a bit disappointed. I had one gold leaf on mine, and Dale across the road from me had, like, a tree. I was like, with my gold leaves? I would give myself ten, only because I know how much trouble I went to and, uh, and the extra mile, ten miles that I walked. Sandra, your evening was OK. The food was average. Your entertainment was average, and kind of the evening was just average. Therefore, I'll be giving you an average five. I was looking for a gourmet experience, but tonight's food was just OK. So I'm going to give her a satisfying six. The evening was great, but the food was a letdown. And if they weren't for a cockroach, then I would have given you a seven, but the cockroach gives you a six. So despite the extra 10 miles, the cockroaches and gory goose let Sandra down as she scores a really disappointing 17. Still, at least everybody's still alive. It's day two, and Tracy is putting some distance between herself and last night's dinner. Host number two, Jody, is up and attacking his day's work. Dale is posing, and Sandra ponders. I actually feel really good this morning. I feel refreshed. I had a very excellent day yesterday. I enjoyed every minute of the day. I'm sorry it's over. Sandra is the loony lady. I think she's completely loony. Last night uh, was a great uh, victory for me. I was uh, very disappointed with the food. It was definitely not the gourmet league that I thought I was up against. I'm looking forward to the evening with Tracy because I think she's going to be really nervous and she's going to be really tense, as lawyers are. I'm very interested to see what she's going to be like now that it's not her host night. I don't know if she'll be the sweet old lady that she was last night. Tonight with Tracy, I'm going to give her a big hug and a big kiss and see what happens. I'm going to go straight for the mouth. <laughs> and she may well wipe the smile off your face. Meanwhile, Jody's puckering up with a big dish for his movie-themed night, Babe's Roasted Pork Belly. I knew that it would be film-themed. I knew it. Yeah, I kind of expected something in the entertainment industry, and uh, luckily I've seen all of these movies. <laughs> so we have the fennel seeds and the... along with the times, the garlic, as well as the sea salt. So we're being blend together, get in, in, into a nice little paste with some olive oil, and then obviously just covering that with the, with the inside of the, of the pork belly. Oh, if you've seen the movie, I can just imagine them cooking her little belly. And she was talking. Not anymore, oh. she's not. Jodie finishes off Babe and starts on dessert. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This dessert obviously has three little things, so it's like death by chocolate, and hence me calling it Charlie at the Chocolate Factory. So what's basically going on, we're going to have the mousse, lovely chocolate mousse. Then we're going to be having lovely chocolate vodka. <laughs> and then we'll be having lovely chocolate brownies as well. Hopefully it's not too rich after the pork belly. Chocolate is not as famous as it used to be before, where everyone be like, I'm a world of chocolate this, chocolate that, and especially with all these, I'm a weight watchers, I can't have chocolate, or I'm a sugar rush, I can't have chocolate. Girl and guy, y'all gonna eat y'all chocolate. A sugar rush is always a great thing when you leave. <laughs> I absolutely adore chocolate. I guess a chocolate fountain I'm imagining, with fruits and marshmallows that you dip in, but hopefully it's gonna be a little more exciting than that. There's nothing mundane about Jody. And there, you've got it. Chocolate vodka. It melt, 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 melt. You get your tot glass, you pour in your tot glass, and you drink. Yes, more film-based dishes for his starter. Pirate prawns of the Caribbean. Do you see what he's done there? I'm visualising little prawns with pirate hats on and a little thing over the eye. Could be good. Let's hope it's 
more elaborate than the simplicity <laughs> of the wording. Well, Jodie's going for elegant star-studded simplicity with a red carpet for the guests to walk up. Yes, he really is starring in his own show, love. And he's gone all out with his props for the movie theme. Rubbish wigs, popcorn, lights, and wings, of course. Let's party! <laughs> Maybe he'll give us little Oscars instead of fallen angels <laughs> to take home with us. <laughs> They're going to find it very hard to beat the fantasy tent. This man, you could be a nominee for Best Picture, but I'm definitely going to take in the Oscar. Not so fast, fella. You haven't won the Oscar yet. The Hollywood extravaganza is prepped, and the first guest in is Dale. Try to imagine Dr. Evil auditioning for Goodfellas. Oh. <laughs> welcome, Hi welcome, yeah. welcome to my home. Hi, Dave. Very well, thanks. Oh, thank you. Okay, so welcome to the movie. I smell the popcorn already. <laughs> I'm not big on themes in the first place, and today when I got hit with the theme and a movie theme, I thought it was kind of cheesy, and I just went with it. And his choice of props, <laughs> absolutely disgusting. You are the uh, producer. Oi, oi, here comes Madame Susara, definitely ready for a premiere. Oh, fabulous! You look delicious! <laughs> Welcome. Mwah. Mwah. Hello. Hello, how are you? Fine, and you? <laughs> cool. A kiss for you. <laughs> and last in, looking foxy, it's Tracy. Hello! <laughs> Hello. She you. hugged him! Absolutely <laughs> love it! Oh, grazie! Oh, divine! We actually have the inside. Please follow oh, through. I love your jacket! Tracy walked through the door wearing a smoking hot red dress and a fur coat. I just went in for the kill. <laughs> oh, this isn't going to end well. Oh, rejected. <laughs> and uh, got a slap in the face, basically. <laughs> There's a line when you greet somebody. Mm -hmm. And fair enough, Dale crossed the line, but Dale has a habit of crossing the line. Is it, is it real? Is it... It's vintage. Vintage. Yeah, yeah. vintage. I looked at the fur and I thought that if that's real, Tracy, I'm going to give you some serious stick. The witness will answer the question. <laughs> is it real? <laughs> is it real? I'm not actually sure. OK. Mm. OK. Have a feel and you tell me what you think. Well, it doesn't smell real. What do you think? I don't think anybody who's anybody would actually wear real fur. I'm wearing fur and Miss I string hu strung, hung and quartered a geese in my backyard and then showed you the photo is commenting about fur, really. Kill an animal for a horn or a skin so that people can glamour around in a coat or a pair of shoes, not for me. What about if she ate the animal afterwards? No? Oh, well, Jody's readying his first filmic feast by coating the prawns in breadcrumbs and coconut, ready to fry pirate prawns of the Caribbean. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to introduce to you the pirate prawns of the Caribbean. <laughs> oh. So, Dale, are the prawns swashing your buckle? The prawns, I'm afraid, were uh, terrible. <laughs> they were soggy. They um, were just, I mean, basically just like loads of coconut. Um, the second one that I bit into was completely raw. Try this one, it's a little raw though. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know about that. <laughs> he killed himself laughing and made a joke of it, which I think he did a good job of. My, my sincere apologies. Where's the ship? <laughs> Luciano, you're fired! <laughs> I felt in the moment of the raw prawn, which I'll never forget for the rest of my life, I improvised. Jodie's giving us one man show tonight because cooking, I can tell you now, is not Jodie's forte. But he is working it on every other level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jodie, do it again. <laughs> do the escalator now. Yes. Introducing the main event, Babe's Roasted Pork Belly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our main Babe.
But I don't think he's ever done a roast pork before because it was completely tasteless. It was very dry. There was no gravy or jus. There should have been some kind of sauce. The main course is certainly not award-winning. It was very mediocre. And you can see it was prepared by somebody who doesn't cook. Have I ever made a pork belly before? I've never made it. Never mind, even carved it before. I have a question for yes, you. Yes, sir. Since you're such an expert carver. Yes. <laughs> so what so animal scared. did you carve those balls off from? So they are original kudu balls. Um, their little history is I used to be a smoker. I am no longer a smoker and it's actually a little lighter holder. When I had to touch them, it's those oh, hairy balls. I can't bear the thought. Whoa! <laughs> it's alive! It's alive! <laughs> Could have all, I don't think they feel like that. Because that didn't feel like a ball because it was some doing with my hand. <laughs> because it was hard. So I'm sure I'm sure they are not. <laughs> you do know there's metal inside them, don't you? On with the final dish to thrill and hopefully impress. Not a fountain in sight, Dale. Here's dessert, chocolate brownies, vodka and mousse straight from Willy Wonka's factory. The final performance this evening is none other than Charlie and the Chocolate Factory! Let's give a round of applause for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The cup of mousse was very pleasant. The brownies were a complete disaster. Um, I'm going to send him a recipe. Compared to Sandra's evening last night, and no disrespect, I am definitely still in the competition. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was amazing. It was just chocolate. He didn't, he didn't glitz it, he didn't put fruit in. I thought maybe there would be fruit for the fun toy sort of atmosphere, but he didn't put fruit in and it was just chocolate. I thought Jodie's acting was exceptional, but in the end, the movie was a box office flop. So I have to give him a six. Jodie, your hosting tonight was a little bit noisy. Your food was really uh, reeked of somebody who doesn't really cook. Try to tonight, but for that reason, I will give you a six. Jodie, tonight I was transported into the movies and I felt like I was in Hollywood. I'm giving you a fabulous eight. And that's a wrap. It's a wrap, all right, but maybe this one's going straight to DVD. Lucky for Jody, the Queen of Narnia enjoyed a bit of drama, so our host scored a respectable 20 from his public. It's day three and the inscrutable Tracy's turn to cook. The guests are limbering up for a night with her as their host. I think that Tracy's going to really try uh, at her most... Uh to win the competition, but I'm not sure she's going to be able to pull it through. Lawyers are actually, in my opinion, quite boring people. So I'm expecting reasonably unexciting stuff. Her comments are completely irrelevant and it goes straight over the top of my head and she can carry on. And then she looks a bit like a fool. The dynamics are just, it's going crazy right now. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's happening next. I mean, like, who, who's, who's with who? What's happening next? Who's eating what? It's crazy. To all the intrigue, Tracy begins with her dessert. Lemon, granadilla and champagne cheesecake. You can buy that at the corner cake shop. Zest of one lemon that will go into the mixture. Juice of two lemons, you use condensed milk and you use cream and you whip that together until it's stiff. And for the base, you just use crushed biscuits. And there you have it, a figure busting pud. There's no fear of fat with the main though, as it's Asian seared tuna on a bed of vegetables and pad thai noodles. You do tuna's cooked. And moving still inside, and then I really enjoy it. I really think that the menu kind of reflects in Tracy's personality of being a cold fish. Just because she won't kiss you, starter is crispy jalapeno phyllo rolls. Pilo, pilo, phyllo, phyllo rolls. It's more of a little bar snack than an actual appetizer for me. 
A jalapeno phyllo roll is um, cream cheese and chopped jalapenos, and then you mash it together and then you roll it into a little, well, I do a spring roll type phyllo roll. This is an unexciting menu. Well, Tracy doesn't care what you think, Sandra. She's trying to spice up her night with a mystery bag of fun. The idea will be that I'll bring out the bag and they will take out the first thing that they get. So it could be anything. So here's one of the items, which is a crazy bunny hat with bunny ears. Crazy! I'll get ready while these get clean so that when I come out, everything's clean. As you'd expect from a dishwasher. First in tonight is Mr Big Shot Dale. Good hey. evening. Hello. Hey. Fine, thanks to you. Well, thank you very much. That looks lovely. The chocolates. Oh, dear. Looks like payback time for giving him the cold shoulder, Tracy. I'll get the door. Okay. Make myself at yeah, home. Yeah, relax. Please sit okay, down. Cool. Thanks. Relax. Yeah, make yourself at home, Dale. Have a little poke around if you want. Well, that certainly put the smile back on his face. Tracy's night is about to get even tougher. Here's Sandra. Hello. How are you? Please do come in. Cold. <laughs> what have you brought me? Nothing. Oh, I see you have a gift in your hand. Is no, that... it's for myself. I wanted to treat myself. You look oh, Of course it is. Thank you. You too. I Lovely. see we're both in black this evening. I'm the, I'm the judge. You're the lawyer. Now I can choose. I could either be the client, which I decline, thank you very much, or I can be the judge, because I have to judge her tonight on a performance she's delivering. Blimey, this lot aren't taking any hostages tonight. I'm fine. Good. I've got a cold. <laughs> OK. So I think I'll steer clear from everybody. So what's your verdict on this? <laughs> Why do you have that in your hand? I was looking at it. <laughs> I needed a closer look. Yeah, I thought that was very odd that she's dis displaying a, a picture of herself in a bikini, mm -hmm. especially knowing she had visitors coming tonight. That's just an odd picture to put out, so she obviously wanted some attention. That is very hot. Let me just wipe the drool <laughs> off your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> oh, heck, this is all becoming a little tense. Get inside, Jody, quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my face looks lovely. I was just wondering what you were going to be wearing. Oh, oh, what well, I had a little. <laughs> did you all? Oh, lovely. Oh, I love it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Look at this I just love My strategy right now is to actually see if Tracy's got what it takes to host people without a sidekick. So that's my little game plan for today. Oh, not you as well, Jody. Well, this is awkward. Silent staring and standing in judgment. First dish for the dissection, crispy jalapeno filo rolls. Would you guys like to have a seat? Because I'm going to serve my starter. You are more than welcome to sit wherever you want. This one says Thank you very much. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> it is called a jalapeno filo roll. It's jalapeno. I know if you're Mexican, but I'm not an English, so I pronounce the J. <laughs> you are exposing yourself to an enormous amount for tomorrow night. <laughs> Be very, very afraid. Ooh. Be very afraid. Why? I've also been around the world five times. You can pronounce it any way you like, really, as long as people know what you're talking about. But I think I would never correct somebody who doesn't say it correctly, because we're not living in Mexico. Sorry, Mexico. Yeah, don't be so boss, Rardale. There was nothing mild about it. I couldn't carry on. I was being polite, just eating the one. It was very, very tasty. It had a little bit of a bite to it. I finished it because I loved it. Kind words, but Sandra and the others are still putting the pressure on Tracy. Just put sesame seeds on my tuna. Okay. Tuna steaks are all sitting here. Rather the sauce. Multi tuna. I, yeah. I can talk to you, but I would prefer not to. It's a hostile audience, Tracy. Try charm. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, you blocked off everyone's little talks that they'd like to be because you were frying. No, be open and speak to your guests. Tracy, there's a hair on that one piece of tuna. No, there isn't. No, there is not. Sandra was on fire tonight. <laughs> I think she was all over the place. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on in her head, but uh, yeah, she tried to, you know, protect Tracy at one point, and then the next minute she was putting Tracy down. I only said that because Tracy needed her full concentration.
for all of the time that you're standing there searing the tuna with an eye on the clock. Well, that's more protein for you because this is protein rich here. <laughs> the bottom ends are dead though, so it's not got a lot of feeding value. No, they aren't. It says you. <laughs> but Sandra, it appears she's both judge and executioner. As for the judge being on your side. <laughs> That was a farce. <laughs> Let's hope the antagonism doesn't ruin the main course. Seared tuna on a bed of vegetables and pad thai. Awkward on every single level. And there were a moment of silence. Like needles could drop. Silences don't disturb me at all. I can keep myself occupied. I never turned around and said, get out of my kitchen. I pulled through, I cooked the steaks, and they were perfect, so fail. But will you fail? One last painful course. Your presentation was so good, so I thought I, I need to do something special with my presentation, so I thought I'd do a little bit of piping um, just to make the dessert look a little bit more special. And here it is, lemon granadilla and champagne cheesecake. And a picture of Tracy. I have a little bit of something special for you. Just a little bit to show you that there's a fun side to me as well. That is so contrived. I feel sorry for her because if you have to show somebody your fun, it means that you have to think about it, take it out of the bag and be fun. Fantastic! Oh, yes. <laughs> oh it's happening. Thank it you. is <laughs> happening. <laughs> I don't know what Tracy was thinking at the very end. Trying to do a thin evening like two seconds before we are leaving. Hey girl, thanks for the wig. <laughs> I'm sure you did for something. I was expecting like some effort made in the in the cheesecake, like a real baked cheesecake. Um, in the end, it was like uh, a fridge tart. It reminded me of a bizarre, like a bizarre dessert. My mystery bag was the perfect end to the evening because it just topped everything off and got people in the mood. Tracy was really brave cooking in front of us, so for that fact, I'm going to give her a seven. I haven't felt that awkward or that bored in a very long time, and your food was a bit bland. And therefore, Tracy, I'm giving you a five. Tracy, you were a nervous host, but your food was really nice. I'm giving you a six tonight. So when the tables were turned and Tracy found herself being frozen out, she could only muster a painful 18 points. Day four, and the contestants don't seem to be letting their harsh behaviour last night ruin a lovely morning. Steady. I was worried about yesterday, but I I was relaxed, and I think that my guests were relaxed, and I, every single course came out exactly how I wanted it to be. Tracy's dinner party, even if you do you even call that a dinner party? I'm just saying. She got caught off guard quite a few times, and her true colours shone through. Dale's night is going to be very opulent and extravagant, and he will spare no expense. Dale tonight will probably try and show me anybody how he's travelled in the world. Because I'm from LA and South Africa, so I live six months in LA. Let's just... I think Madame Sandra is on to him. I think they're all on to him. Back to Dale in his opulent pad. Singleton, select your starter. Gaspacho and Duluth with prosciutto and garnishes. The starter is undescribable. <laughs> oh, here we go. Get the dictionary. Oh, here we go with the travels. Basically, I soak um, bread in some white wine vinegar. I put a garlic clove in there and our bread. You just squeeze the vinegar out. Add it in there. Is gazpacho some sort of Mexican starter? Gazpacho is, a, is a, a, an original um, cold tomato soup from Seville. Correct, but who's the know-it-all now, Madame Cesara? The showboating doesn't stop in Seville because the main is an ostrich banang curry, jasmine rice, mange too and garden salad. Aha, I hope he knows what panang is all about. The panang is a, is a curry that you do in a wok normally. 
being my ostentatious self, I would probably prepare it in front of my guests. I know it's not man's chart, it's like manyo to or something like that. Manwa to. <laughs> Mench, tote and garden salad. Mange too, Sherry. Um, OK. Dale's now grappling with his plums for the plum crumble with vanilla cream. Can I'm... crumble? No. That can't be crumble, eh? Well, it's cooked fruit, so I won't eat that. Why not? Plum cum crumble is terribly English with vanilla cream. Very pleasant. Less is more. I like the minimalistic look. I like it to be simple and clean, not too cluttered. They don't even have knives and forks that will come with each serving. Dale! <laughs> For me to actually score you great, you are going to have to blow me away. I'm sure he's aiming to blow you all away. That view is pretty hard to beat. And Dale won't be playing his kingdom down. Here's Jody, ready to be blown. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my house. Oh, oh, Come thank inside. You, thank you. This is for you. Oh, cool. This is absolutely yeah. stunning. Wow. So, would you like some champagne? Um, yes, please. Of course. I would, thank you. We have some with Clicquot tonight. Jody's trying very hard not to look impressed. Maybe Tracy's more of a pushover. Hi. Hello, good, evening. <laughs> good evening. Come inside. Thank you. You look wow. lovely. Thank You've got you an go. animal print tonight. Yes. <laughs> the sun said that I viewed was absolutely remarkable. It was breathtaking. It was beautiful. And then what ruined it all was when I turned to my left and realized that Dale wakes up to that every single morning. Jealous. It's a dream to wake up to this every morning. I can uh, imagine, and I thought my view was good. <laughs> Dale will stand next to me. Oh, and this little flower comes from, and I was like... <sighs> and last in, globe-trotting Sandra. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my house. How are you? Thank Come you. Come inside. Wow, isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, it's beautiful. What view. a view. My side is Gaspacho Andaluz, which originates in Andalusia. Uh, in Spain, it's a region in Spain. So it'll be interesting to see if anyone gets the pronunciation right. Snob. Tracy, what is gazpacho? Oh, is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> well, it's lost on these two children. It's a cold tomato-based soup. Absolutely right. She may not know the pronunciation, but she does know what's coming. Cold soup. And you're there. there you go. Thank you. Well, I have a Dele Sauvignon Blanc. How much is that? Really beautiful. <laughs> uh, what do you say? <laughs> I cringed when she asked, when Tracy asked the price of the the wine tonight. This one certainly doesn't do that. One doesn't talk about money. It's so not done. I want to drink the expensive stuff because opportunities like this don't come my way all the time. So I'm going to ride that wave. The food is absolutely delicious. Well, thank you, Sandra. Mm, lovely. I knew you'd lovely. appreciate it. Mm. I love the way you also state that you knew she would appreciate it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with learning new it's things. It's only because I'm old. <laughs> no, it's obviously because you know it. <laughs> well, Sandra made a point of saying she's well-travelled as me, and so I thought she would have tried this before. Well, with age, we definitely will be well-travelled, <laughs> Tracy and I, too. You <laughs> have the whole world waiting babies. for you. It's wonderful. It's Dale will say something like, Sandra, you will know what this is. And Sandra, oh, well, yes, I know it's this, and but actually it's from this country, and they, they're trying to compete with each other. The soup. What was this about? Oh, great, we got a little excursion. Soup? Cold? Soup? This is actually an original dish from Seville. Did oh, you really? Mm-hmm. It comes from there. I lived with a the family there for a while, and this is from them, because I actually love cold cold soup. Tonight, I definitely felt that it's all about the young guys, Trace and myself, against the oldies. Jody reacts a little bit viciously when he doesn't know something. And don't get so angry because you get questioned, um, because it's all part of your journey. If I want to figure out something about something, I go onto my laptop, and I've got it. Thank you very much. General knowledge is becoming 
redundant completely because nowadays everybody just Googles it. So guys, um, I have a little surprise for you. I'm going to show you my fun side. So we're going to go down into my dungeon. Are you ready? What an offer! Visiting Dale's dungeon to see his fun side. Welcome to the games room. Wow. Watch your step, everyone. Honestly, I was not transported to any happy place at all this evening. Number one, I'm not heterosexual. Thanks. Number two, I'm not a little jock brow who's going to enjoy playing little games and shooting things. It's not who I am, nor are the ladies. Okay, uh, I just saw something in your pool area. What was that? What? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, that poor, <laughs> poor mermaid, it's only spring. The water must be freezing. There she is. Hello. I think that mermaid must be swimming in that swimming pool way more than she's supposed to be. I don't think she was just there this evening for us. Just saying. Just saying what? Oh, well, looks like the mermaid hasn't distracted the group enough to keep them away from the kitchen. What goes into the Penang case? Um, basically, it's a lot of uh, dried red Thai uh, chilies. You use a lot of them. Um, Galanga ginger. Uh, coriander root, you actually use the roots. Dale takes his cooking very seriously and he's got all the... This is a special leaf that I've never heard of and there's another special leaf and there's special ways of cutting special leaves. Maybe Sandra can tell us what this is? That, my darling, is palm sugar. Yep. When I read Dale's menu today, I was hoping he would cook in a wok. He delivered. It was beautiful to see. He has a wonderful kitchen set up. And he did very well. Wow, mermaids and a wok. Whatever next. Time for the main. Ostrich Penang curry with mange too. That's French, as I'm sure Dale will tell you. Oh, the mange too. <laughs> <laughs> you got it right. Top marks, Madame Cesara. It's a French word. Oh. For eat all. Oh. Yeah. Which means sometimes you get the snap peas and you can't eat the outside, just the inside. This, it's a French corny thing. Eat it all. <laughs> I felt like I was sitting at the table and I wanted to say thank you, Mum and Dad, for that lovely language lesson. Dale thinks that much of every single person sitting around his dining room table this evening. I think Dale is under the impression that if we were on a playground at school, he was the kid who had it all. Yes, and he still does, and he's showing it all off. Jody, it's plum crumble. That told you, Jody. Plum crumble. Last dish of the night. I read plum. Plum what? Was it crumble? Crumble. Crumble. Yeah. Crumble. crumble. <laughs> what did you think it was? <laughs> I didn't have crumble on my <laughs> crumble. <laughs> He was clearly expecting something far more exotic, like a crumble. Starters are Spanish, and um, the main is Thai. Right. And what is the dessert? It's from Germany. It's not, it's British! Right now, I am beyond Overdale. Dale, that is fantastic. Oh, this comes from Japan. Oh, that comes from Asia. Oh, this comes from... That's great. You were born into it. That's fantastic. Oh, whoop whoop for you. Um, the next time you're actually going to be educating people, have respect for them. So, Dale, I hear you are very well travelled. Um, with regards to your method of correcting people, though, please educate me on that. Why do you do it the way you do? I'm not correcting, I'm just sharing knowledge. I grant it, but some say, which I said, I, I started off my statement with saying I respect the fact that you are a wild child, but just the, the method in which you do correct the next person, like... Yeah. Or maybe, maybe, um, mm -hmm. you take it in a, a, a defensive way. I'm actually just, just saying what I know, I'm just sharing my knowledge. Jody is out of place because there was nothing to justify the attack tonight because there was nothing that scratched at him specifically. Because people can do things, and, and I understand it in terms of, that's why I said, with all respect, like, it's, you are well-traveled, and therefore I think it's beautiful, and for anyone who's not well-traveled to have absorbed that information from you and go on a journey with you, but, but it's not done that way there with you. Don't pretend like this is what you worked for when this was given to you. Don't pretend. I think that's what's jealous. Make, that's, that's the anger part that's making me very jealous about it all. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way, I promise you. 
Well, Jody's clearly fed up with both the lessons and the loot. I just cleared up for myself. No worries. I have really tried just to be nice about just handing out knowledge and for him to say he doesn't even want to listen to what I say was quite a shock. I didn't think I was being disrespectful ever. So if he got that feeling, I was really genuinely sorry about it, but I, I didn't mean to come across that way at all. Right, Dale. Your food was no better than Tracy's or Sandra's. And ever since I walked into your home, I felt disrespectful and patronized. And I felt like I was in a playground where you were showcasing everything that you had. And therefore, I'll be giving you a middle class five. Dale, your food tonight took me on a trip around the world. And that's worthy of an eight. But when I went down to your man room, which in my opinion is not worthy of a lady, you've lost your eight. I'm giving you a seven. Yes, she comes. <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In last place is Sandra. Not to worry. Not to worry. We all did well. But we have a tie for first place, which means a winner either is me, Tracy, or Jody. <laughs> <laughs> and the winners are me and Jody. Yay! A match made in heaven. Dale and Jody tied for first place, putting Tracy in second. Yes. Dale, tonight the food was incredible. It really was delicious. But I told you I don't eat cooked fruit, so you're getting an eight. So Dale had to share the dosh with Jody because of cooking his plums. Well, that's life. And Jody seems to be over his hissy fit. It's amazing what a bit of money you'll do. <laughs> Happy days, everybody. Happy days. I think the winners are worthy winners. I'm very happy for them. The producer and the actor will be meeting for lunch. <laughs> I don't mind uh, sharing the prize, because when Jody makes it big in Hollywood, I'll be sharing all the royalties in any case. To the two best men, well done. But the champagne's won. Gotta take something. <laughs>